This video is going to show you how to make a handwritten set of notes for the final exam. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've written down all the things that students tend to screw up. And then I went and I printed a periodic table on a piece of cardstock. And that's because I like to use a lot of colors. For the sake of the video, though, I'm just going to write in black. And I'm going to start with my colligative properties. So the change in temperature is equal to I, the Van Hoff constant, times M, the molality, times some C constant, which you would typically be given to you somewhere. So lowercase m, the molality, is the moles of solute over the kilograms of solvent. And hopefully we'll get back into focus here in a second. So capital M molarity is different. It's the moles of solute per liters of solution. Now again, I started trying to put colors in, but it ended up being just too much. So I'm just going to write in black and every now and then highlight a few things. So the percent mass concentration is the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution times 100. Now the total mass of the solution is going to be the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. And I, I tend to write over the top of my writing, so this is a little awkward for me. Hopefully it'll stay in focus though. Now the mole fraction is going to be the moles of some, some, some substance A over the total moles. And I want to uh, speak specifically about this vapor pressure thing that I just wrote down. So the vapor pressure is going to be equal to the mole fraction of the liquid times the pressure of the liquid. Students always apply Raoult's law incorrectly. I also wrote down Raoult's law, but that's how you find the vapor pressure. The vapor pressure, Raoult's law is actually the change in pressure. And you see that delta P, if this will stop shaking, you'll see it. Delta P equals, and then the mole fraction of A times the pressure of the liquid. So then we're going to move on to thermo. So we have S, which is the chaos theory, and that is your or your chaos function, and that is entropy. When S is greater than zero or positive, it's favorable. When it's less than zero or negative, it is not favored. G is your Gibbs free energy. When it is greater than zero it's, or positive, it is not spontaneous. But G being negative or less than zero is spontaneous. When it equals zero, it's at equilibrium. So when you have that little, little circle, so S naught or G naught, that means it's from the tables. When G equals... H minus TS, G also equals negative N, F, L, and Q. So then we're going to move on to equilibrium. There isn't too much to uh, write down for equilibrium, and I'm sorry, it's not quite in focus. So KP is equal to KC times uh, the RT function raised to the delta N. Now R is 0 0.08206. Make sure you write down your constants if you can't remember them. And your delta N is the change in uh, gas moles. Make sure your T is in Kelvin. Now for acids and bases, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn it over to the periodic table side. And I'm going to use a blue marker because I associate bases with blue. And I'm going to highlight the elements that when combined with oxide or hydroxide become strong bases. So these are going to be your strong bases with OH. So your lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Those are the only strong bases. Everything else is going to be a weak base. Then I'm going to write down my strong acids. So for strong acids, we have HCl, HNO3, H2SO4, HBr, HI. We should have HClO4 and HClO3. And then we have a series of equations and things that sometimes students can can screw up. So we have pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion. The hydronium ion is H3O plus. It's also the negative log of the hydrogen ion. Hydronium and hydrogen are used interchangeably. POH is then the negative log of the concentration of the hydroxide. pH plus POH equals 14. And then I have some samples. Now, I do not work sample problems with this sheet. If you feel you need to, write smaller and put a few sample problems in. And I uh, indicate the Ka and the Kb. Now, Kw is equal to a constant, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And that is also equal to Ka plus Kb. Now, for buffers, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus the log of the acetate over the weak acid, and that's only for simplified ice situations. You are allowed to simplify when the initial concentration is more than a thousand times different than your K value. If you are less than a thousand times different, you may not simplify. So the quadratic equation would be a really good thing to write down if you don't have that programmed into your calculator. You will have access to a, quadra a quadratic equation solver 
through Respondus. There will be a link at the top of the final exam. And then I go down and I write just a couple of reminders. So when you're titrating a strong acid and a strong base, before the equivalence point, the pH is going to be dependent on the extra acid. At the equivalence point, it's going to be equal to 7. That's strong acid, strong base. That's just what it is. And then after the equivalent, equivalence point, the pH is dependent on the extra base. But for a weak acid strong base, before the equivalence point, you're dependent on the weak acid ice table with Ka. At equivalence point, you're going to be dependent on that uh, Kb expression that I wrote where my index finger on my left hand is, where the acetate, I, I'm using acetate because acetic acid is often used, where your uh, conjugate base plus water uh, equilibrium. So then we're going to move on to redox. So I put this here because I wanted it under entropy because G equals negative NFE naught. Now F is 96,485. It's one of those um, standard values that you need to remember. Then I have my E naught of my cell is going to be equal to the E of the cathode minus the E of the anode. There's reduction at the cathode, oxidation at the anode. Those are directly from the tables. E naught of the cell is a negative, I'm sorry, not a negative, a 0 0.0592 over N log of K. The oxidation is the reactant reacts to form uh, electrons and products. I've highlighted oxidizing, oxidizing reagent is the reactant being reduced. Reducing agent is the reactant being oxidized. And then I have steps for the half reaction method. And I tried to zoom in because I thought this was terribly small as I was starting to run out of space, but it looks like it is going to uh, focus on my fingers, which isn't very helpful. But I do have the half reaction method steps written down. But again, I don't have a sample question. If you feel you need a sample question, write small, write neatly. And then the E equals E naught minus 0.0592N over the log of Q. Then I'm going to write down my rates table for the kinetics. We have 0, 1, and 2. That means the rate is equal to K, or the rate is equal to K times the concentration, or K times the concentration squared, or K times concentration of one to concentration of the other. I have the units of my K, as well as the integrated rate laws for each of those orders of reactions. Now then, I'm going to flip over, and a lot of times students forget, well, what are the oxidation states, the typical oxidation states, or ions formed from some of the transition metals. So I'm just going to write those in briefly. You see, we do sort of have a pattern here, and that is based on the electron configurations, which we would have gone over in Chem 1. So, and then I'm going to write mercury, uh, these are the standard uh, ions here, and I'm going to write mercury up at the top here, because mercury 1 is a diatomic atom, or a diatomic ion, it's Hg2, 2+, plus, and mercury 2 is then Hg2+. Plus. So then I've kind of color-coded, if I was writing this for myself, everything would have been written in different colors. Hope it helps.